I herewith open the case against Dikembe Brasico for reckless failure to repay a loan. Mr. Attorney, the floor is yours. Thank you, Your Honour. <coughs> First of all, I'd like to point out that the creditors have shown a high degree of patience. For a long time, they hoped that the defendant might come to his senses and avoid a trial like this one. However, like any citizen of his state, the defendant owes his creditors their full dues. Thanks to interest and compound interest, his debt stock keeps rising daily. But Mr. Brasico has literally done nothing to change this. Indeed, on the contrary, he knows he should produce pineapples for export. But what does he do instead? He produces millet. Millet for his own consumption. Millet which will never reach the market. Rather than assume responsibility for the economy as a whole, he just muddles around as if it were the millet gruel on his table which made the world go round. Mr. Attorney, please. He could do that, no problem. Were this just his own business? were it not for the fates of many creditors who depend on him. The word creditors, Your Honour, ladies and gentlemen in the jury, is derived from credere, to believe. They believed in him. They wanted to help him out of his misery. They provided him with considerable amounts of money, and they do not even demand gratitude in return. Just a bit, just a little bit of effort. Thank you. The debt crisis of the third world, still an unresolved problem. On average, each person in the countries of the South owes northern creditors the equivalent of a full annual income. In fact, many countries of the South still pay more to their creditors in debt service than they spend on the health and education of their people. More than one billion people still live below the poverty line. And every day, more than 30,000 children die from malnourishment, lack of health care, or preventable diseases. That's nearly 21 a minute. The debt of the so-called developing countries has a long history. It started in the 16th century with the genocide committed by the European colonizers in the newly discovered Americas. The plundering of Latin America's riches using African slaves contributed to Europe's growing wealth and to the dependency of these countries which later on would be referred to as the Third World. By the 19th century, the colonizers had managed to gear the colonies' economies completely towards their own interests. And this didn't change in the 20th century when most countries of the Third World secured their independence from the colonial powers. Exports of raw materials and agricultural products remained the major sources of income. No national industries could grow. The debt crisis of the developing countries emerged, which continues until today. In the 70s, when oil prices rose, the oil-producing nations deposited their newfound dollars in rich country banks. These banks began desperately looking for investment opportunities. What resulted could be called a credit tourism towards the South. Rich country banks lent money without really caring that in many cases it went into useless projects. In the early 80s, the system collapsed. President Reagan financed his massive armament buildup through loan financing, and this pushed interest rates up dramatically worldwide. Many developing countries could not service their debts at these interest rates and found themselves in a debt trap. Attempts to repay their debts by increasing exports of raw materials and agricultural products soon backfired because nearly all poor countries pursued this same strategy. This caused world prices to fall rapidly. Incomes did not rise but actually fell. New loans had to be taken out and the global gap between rich and poor kept growing. However, the members of the so-called Paris Club who negotiate individual countries' debt problems here in the French Treasury could hardly care less. Defence, the floor is yours. Your Honour, honourable members of the jury, Mr Attorney, my client is not a rich man. Through hard labour he grows a little millet for his family from stony soil, and he's an honourable man. His debts are of great concern to him, just now, he has asked me, why do I, Dikembe Brasico, have debts? I have no car, I have no TV, but I have got debts. 
And that causes him pain. I object. Your Honour, the personal feelings of the defendant have no place in this court. Defence, please get to the point. So, let us consider the situation very objectively. We must not forget the old saying, he who condemns his debtor to death will have to pay the funeral. That, Mr. Attorney, will remain to be seen. Regarding the personal situation of the defendant, we have a witness. Mr. Miller, please, to the witness stand. And nothing but the truth. Mr. Miller, as a representative of the International Monetary Fund, you've been investigating the economic situation of Mr. Brazica. What is your conclusion? Well, my experience has led me to believe that in every household you can identify considerable potential for savings as well as idle income opportunities. Let me refer to one particularly dramatic example. Mr. Brasico not only sends his 12-year-old son to school, but also his daughters of eight and nine, withholding their nimble fingers from the production process, not to mention the cost of school attendance. Your Honour, I would like to briefly consult with my client. Mr. Brasico, you should have told me. I am your lawyer. How can you attack me like that? Oh, God, we are doomed. No, do not say anything. Simply do not say anything. Please continue. The 77-year-old grandmother who also lives in the house not only sits idle all day, in fact, she sleeps on a mattress which has been bought especially for her. Mr. Brasico's wife looks after the four small children all day and thus is also unavailable for any meaningful activity. Oh, no. It's going to be a tough job to get you out of this mess. For mosquito nets alone, the family has spent nearly $15, allegedly in order to prevent malaria. In my view, they've done this simply to avoid being bitten. Moreover, I recently found drugs against tuberculosis in the house. But worst of all is Mr. Brasico's dedication to the production of millet, thus avoiding the necessities of the world market. Mr. Judge, Mr. Judge, Your Honour. I object. That's how leading questions begin. Sustained. The Paris Club is truly exclusive. So exclusive that any member of the public present during its meetings would clearly trouble them. Without any formal rules, much less an international mandate, the most important creditors of the third world, the governments of the rich industrialized countries, meet to decide not only on their own claims, their decisions also set the standards for other creditors, such as private banks. If a debtor country runs into payment problems, this is where restructurings or partial reduction of the debt are negotiated, provided the creditors conclude that the actual claims are in reality uncollectible. The debtor country is listened to, but decision-making is the exclusive privilege of the creditors. Even the slightest restructuring is only granted on the basis of an adjustment program which the debtor country needs to agree with the International Monetary Fund. The most important conditions in the IMF's programs are complete opening up of the country to world trade, dismantling of subsidies, particularly for basic food staples, radical cuts in budget spending. For the people in the affected countries, these programs are having severe consequences. Hunger and poverty grow, while basic foodstuffs become more expensive. Diseases thought to be eradicated return, where the state is forced to cut back on preventative health care. And many parents cannot send their kids to school when they are confronted with school fees. All this is nothing the Paris Club would consider in its negotiations, nor is the creditors' co-responsibility for the South's debt. Lenders of the 70s, 80s and 90s knew pretty well that loans were given for completely oversized projects, for corrupt dictators or for arms purchases with correspondingly low rates of return. The Paris Club's internal structure guarantees that these facts will not surface. Formally, the IMF and the World Bank assume the role of independent witnesses and even defendants of the debtor. But in reality, everything remains under the control of the creditors. Everything stays within the family. Defence, you may now question the witness. OK, now watch this.
Mr. Miller, you claim to be a recognized expert? Of course, I have all the necessary qualifications. Mr. Miller, you claim to have scrutinized my client's budget? I have. Mr. Miller, you seriously claim that from his household, characterized by hard work and selflessness, more efforts to satisfy the creditor's claims could be expected? What could pursue more meaningful activities, even forgo some things? That would be possible. You are the expert. No further questions. So may I now ask you to sum up? Honourable members of the jury, I admit my client is no angel. His willingness to adapt himself to the necessities of world markets has been underdeveloped. Therefore, it would be reckless to demand an acquittal. However, I repeat, in dubio pro realitas, provide Mr. Brasico with a chance to repair the damage he has caused. In the end, this will pay off. Thank you. Given the overwhelming evidence, any further explanations from my side are unnecessary. So, the last word is with the defendant. Your Honour, I want to... My client wants to say that this High Court may judge in its ultimate wisdom over the fate of a poor sinner. No, that is not at all what I want to say. Mr. I... Brasico, do we really want to make everything even worse? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please leave for your deliberations. Any sustainable solution to the debt crisis of the third world needs to provide the debtor countries with the opportunity for economic recovery through an international insolvency procedure. If a country is unable to pay its debt, it declares itself insolvent, like any private company. An international procedure begins which functions like this. First, the process is public. All claims must be tabled. This inevitably raises questions regarding the creditor's co-responsibility. Second, debtor and creditors negotiate as equals. Both nominate an equal number of judges. These in turn nominate an additional judge who will cast the deciding vote where judges are split equally. Third, resources which the debtor country requires to secure such basic needs as health, education, food security and basic infrastructure cannot be touched. Fourth, ordinary people also get the right to be heard before a decision is made, since they're the ones most affected. And finally, if former dictatorial or corrupt regimes have stolen wealth, this is traced as far as possible and made available for debt repayment. Following these guidelines, the impartial jury will decide how much an indebted country must pay back and how much debt will be cancelled. Resources freed up in this way can be used for improving the prospects of the population with the assistance of independent unions, churches or non-governmental organisations. An institution like the Paris Club will then certainly be superfluous. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honour. So, what's your decision? Guilty. 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 Thank you. In the name of the uh, law, the following sentence is passed. The court finds Dikembe Brasico guilty of all charges. He and his family are condemned to 30 years of severe austerity. Mr. Brasico will immediately start to produce pineapples for export for the benefit of society at large. Uh, by the way, the necessary fertilizers are to be purchased from Bysanto Incorporated. Millet production will be restricted to Mr. Brasico's free time, indeed to night time, but only on soil which is unsuitable for pineapple production. The two daughters, rather than learn unnecessary things at school that they'll never need in real life, will look after their little brothers and sisters to free their mother to work in the fields. Tuberculosis drugs are to be withdrawn and the mosquito nets and mattress are to be sold. The revenue will be used to repay debt. Grandma must again sleep on the soil, which is local custom anyway.
Should these measures not suffice to meet the creditor's justified claims, the court reserves the right to take further action against Ikembe Braziko and his family. No appeal admitted. Case closed. Uh, no, do not thank me. It's just my job to do the best for you. Hey! Alternatives are possible.